I had first heard about the study at NYU through a holotropic breathwork retreat, and there was another member at the retreat who had mentioned the study that was going on for, uh, for AUD. In speaking with her, I realized I had a little bit of a problem that I wanted to resolve, um, and it felt like this was a good opportunity. So what was your relationship to alcohol like before the study? For me, it was reactive, like just had a rough day, came home from a long commute and just need a beer before I can like talk to my family. It wasn't so much the one or two, it was the third and fourth and kind of the, the, the regular cadence of it. Alcohol was probably causing a lot of the anxiety that I was having. In many cases, if treatment is effective and they're able to change their behavior, they can experience a total recovery. So we know that people have these, these sudden changes and, and often are able to turn their lives around, but we've never had uh, a reliable way of bringing that about or even making it likely that that would happen. Knowing on the basis of some of the earlier work that was done with psychedelics to treat addictions back in the 1950s and 60s, it seemed that uh, psilocybin might uh, offer the opportunity to create a situation in which at least some of the people receiving the treatment could have this kind of uh, transformational change. So the purpose of the study was to try to demonstrate scientifically what the effects of the psilocybin treatment was combined with the 12 sessions of non-drug therapy that study participants received. The therapy sessions really taught me that I was reliant on alcohol to push away feelings that, that instead of feeling them, just numb them. I mean, it was immensely important and, and really kind of cemented what was to come with the, with the actual psilocybin sessions and prepare me for them. I had, I had three dosing sessions. Um, the first two were in a double blind scenario. Um, so coming into the first session, it was probably my biggest anxiety was around what medicine was I actually going to get. You know, we know the effects of the high dose of uh, a psychedelic like psilocybin enhances the ability of the brain to change. At the same time, from an experiential perspective, people have these experiences that they interpret as being profoundly healing in many cases. My first session was actually really kind of puzzling and troubling. It had taken me to this ancient, lost underwater world, and, and my sons were with me as my guides, but they kept pulling me up to this, this pirate ship. And I'd be like, no, 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 we have to go back down. Daddy has work to do. There's something down there that's the root of what's, what's going on. We need, we need to get down there. And I was so frustrated because I knew that there was, in my mind, I knew that there was something on the water and I, I felt like I almost lost this opportunity to find out what the root of what was, what was troubling me because my sons kept pulling me up to this pirate ship to play. And it really wasn't until I really started to integrate and meditate on it that it like, triggered to me that that was the lesson, was to stop digging so much for the cause and be more in the moment and be more present, which is a lesson that, you know, this is, almost two years in that I take with me every day. They carry with them a memory of an experience that, you know, I believe continues to support and organize their efforts to change because they can remember what it was like to feel um, at peace and to be, to feel uh, free from their addiction, for example. And that sometimes is hard for people to understand how you know, how that would be or how a single experience could change the brain. But if you think about sort of the opposite of it, I think we all at this point understand pretty well that negative experiences, a single overwhelmingly terrible, traumatic, devastating experience can certainly change people's lives for the, for the worse. The most important finding of the study was that there were very significant differences in drinking between the, the psilocybin group and the control group. The improvement that we saw uh, immediately following 
treatment with psilocybin appeared to persist for the, the full duration of follow-up. It fundamentally changed me immensely. It has just made me happier, so much more present, so much more in the moment with, with my family, with my kids. So if the result of these trials is replicated in, in larger phase three trials and the FDA accepts those results as evidence of safety and efficacy of psilocybin, then you know, we hope that psilocybin can become a, an FDA approved medication for alcohol use disorder. I definitely would recommend the treatment. You really get out of this what you put into it. And I think if people want to change, want to change a behavior, what I believe that this medicine does is it treats the cause, which eliminates the symptoms. This is not a pill that you take that numbs you and you're gone. This is a pill that you take that shows you the root of what's troubling you and helps you deal with it. And if you're willing to do that work, I can't think of anything that's better for you than this that will get someone to the right mental state that they want to be in.